But if it's not the bicarb in soda bicarb that reverses the acidosis, rather it's the sodium ion. But if it's not the loss of hydrogen from stomach in vomiting, but the loss of chloride that causes alkalosis. What if it's the same ion of chloride that frusamide gives away in kidneys that causes alkalosis from frusamide? Why Ringer's lactate is considered physiological fluid? And what is the role of albumin and many other proteins and phosphate? This is not fully understandable through traditional approach. The working of metabolic component of disorder. The respiratory is of course straightforward, carbon dioxide related. So let's see acid-base balance from a rather newer approach called the Stewart approach. The approach in itself is not that new. It was first floated around in 1980s, but the world is catching up to it gradually. So let's begin Stewart approach. Ever wondered in traditional approach, we said pH is dependent on hydrogen ion, which is of course in nano equivalents per liter. So where is this hydrogen ion source? What if in the body there is a source of literally infinite hydrogen ions? Yes, you guessed it right. Water makes up 60% of body weight. Strictly speaking, water doesn't just exist as H2O. It has a property of self-ionizing into hydrogen ions and hydroxyl ions. Within the water body, the hydrogen and hydroxyl ions form bonds to form H2. Then there are intermolecular forces giving it the surface tension properties too. But every now and then, the kinetic energy becomes strong enough to dissociate these ions. So hydrogen ion sort of bounces around between different molecules from H2O to hydronium H3O, which for ease we just write H positive. So principally, the two key ions in H2O are hydrogen and hydroxyl ion. The Stewart principle can be explained by definitions given of acid base by Arrhenius. So an acid is one that gives away hydrogen ion and a base is one that gives away hydroxyl ion. So water in a solution has amphoteric properties. It can give off hydrogen and it can also give off the hydroxyl ion. Pure water is neutral because hydrogen and hydroxyl ions are in equal quantity at 1 into 10 raised power minus 7 under the law of dissociation equilibrium. Now any solution in which hydrogen ions exceed this balance is acidic and any solution in which hydroxyl ion exceeds this balance is basic. Under the law of dissociation equilibrium, the sum of hydrogen and hydroxyl ions within water must remain at 1 into 10 to the power minus 14 or constant. It should remain constant. So if hydrogen ions increase in water, a concomitant decrease in hydroxyl ion occurs and vice versa. So the net sum remains constant. For example, if anything causes water to give away hydrogen ions, reducing hydrogen ions concentration in water to 10 to the power minus 4, then to keep the net sum to a constant of 1 into 10 to the power minus 14, water will strongly hold on to the hydroxyl ions, such that hydroxyl ion amount would be 1 into 10 to the power minus 10. So the total sum of hydrogen and hydroxyl ions would remain constant. Where hydrogen ions are in 40 nano equivalents per liter, water reservoir in body has very high molarity of around 55 mol molar or in other words around 42 kgs of water is present in 70 kg person. So imagine if this blue color highlighter represents water, the hydrogen ion of 40 nano equivalents per liter is microscopic like maybe a tiny dot. In short, there can be no shortage of hydrogen ions in the body with such a huge reservoir, right? So even if the kidneys excrete huge amount of hydrogen ions or vomiting takes away a huge amount of hydrogen from their stomach, they could easily be replaced by more hydrogen ions from water, right? So this all doesn't add up by traditional approach. So the question then really is, what are the forces that affect whether the water will give off the hydrogen to the body or hydroxyl ions to the body? Or what are the forces that persuade the dissociation of water into one of its ions in the body and in short affect the acid-base balance of body? There are three main components that influence the decision of water to give off hydrogen to the body or hydroxyl ions. Number one, the PCO2. We have studied how it generates the hydrogen. Number two, the strong ion difference. And number three, the total weak acids in the body. 
anything that will force a hydrogen ion away from water into body would cause acidosis and vice versa for hydroxyl ion. This is explained through law of electroneutrality. Let's discuss how hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide work. Now, under law of electroneutrality, the sum of cations must equal sum of anions in the body. So, when hydrochloric acid is added to the body, it completely dissociates into hydrogen and chloride. So, the chloride ion or the anion will increase in amount. So, to follow the law of electroneutrality, the hydrogen ion will be forced out of water to balance out the excess negative charge of chloride, right? In other words, the chloride ion is forcing water to give away the hydrogen ion to the body. So, total hydrogen ions will reduce in water, right? Now, obeying the law of dissociation constant, the water will try to hold on to the hydroxyl ions and not let the hydroxyl ions easily get donated to the body. This way, the sum of hydrogen and hydroxyl ions within the water would remain constant at 1 into 10 raised to the power minus 14. So, basically, the chloride or anion is acidic in nature since it derived hydrogen away from water and into the body. The more chloride you add to the body, the more hydrogen dissociation away from water and the more acidosis in the body, right? This explains how hyperchloremia causes acidosis. What about sodium? It would pull away the hydroxyl ions from water to maintain the electroneutrality in body. To conserve the law of dissociation equilibrium, water will this time not let the hydrogen ions break away that easily into body. So, can I say these cations are basic in nature as they derive hydroxyl ions into the system and stop water from giving away the hydrogen ions easily. This explains how sodium in soda bicarb helps tackle acidosis. So, let's see strong ions now. Strong ions are the ones that completely dissociate in solution like HCl which completely dissociated giving off chloride. So, chloride is a strong ion. Similarly, sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, these are all strong ions. Just remember in the body, cations should equal the anions. So, the difference between the sum of cations minus the sum of measurable anions is called the strong ion difference. Since weak acids remain relatively constant under the third law, which is the law of mass conservation, the strong ion difference value is around 42. This 42 represents the unmeasured anions in the body, right? We said cations are basic in nature, like sodium, and anions like chloride are acidic. If you increase the cations in body, the strong ion difference will increase as per this equation. Now, this would cause alkalosis, right? So, as per this concept, if we lose the chloride in NG tube drainage, this will increase the strong ion difference and cause alkalosis. So, it isn't the hydrogen ion loss from NG tube that causes alkalosis, rather, it's the chloride ion. Similarly, lasix or frusamide causes more chloride loss in kidneys compared to the sodium loss. So, strong ion difference will increase. And that shows lessex can cause alkalosis. On the contrary, any issue causing reduced strong ion difference, be it a decrease in strong cations or an increase in strong anions, would cause acidosis. We know about lactic acidosis. Similarly, in hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis, it's the chloride ion causing decrease in strong ion difference. That's the real culprit. When you give too much of 0.9% sodium chloride, the fluid adds chloride to the extracellular fluid more than the sodium. So, the net change in strong ion difference favors acidosis. The third is weak acids. So, the weak acids mainly the albumin and the phosphates remain constant under the law of mass conservation. So, overall, where traditional approach revolved around the henderson hazebeck equation, the Stewart approach relies on this equation. So, the strong ion difference minus the sum of carbon dioxide and total weak acids must be zero. If the sum is in minus, it is acidosis. If the sum is positive, it is alkalosis. So, for acidosis to happen, it happens if there is decrease in strong ion difference or increase in carbon dioxide or increase in albumin or phosphate. Albumin and phosphate being the weak acids. On the contrary, 
Alkalosis happens if there is increase in strong ion difference or a decrease in carbon dioxide or a decrease in weak acids. Why are we still not using the Stewart approach more often? Because ABGs still remain easily available bedside test. But future seems to be favoring the Stewart approach as it is answering so many questions about metabolic aspects and fluid systems. So in the coming episode, we will finally understand how to quickly read ABGs from traditional approach and we will practice a few ABGs for memory. But before that, I want you to revise these equations because these are the six disincentives I would say of traditional approach of reading ABGs where you have to memorize these formulations in order to understand the compensation and partial compensations. Take care and see you.